but everybody outside of being a realtor. So I know a lot of you guys are familiar with TW Maps, and that is our sister company. I'm part of the other part that works with everybody, but so. I love that. I love it. So, um, um, so we have asked everybody today or invited you to obviously open up our team meeting today and the conversation that we're going to have with George about time management, right? And, and how that's so important for us as small business owners, let alone real estate agents. But um, um, afterward today, and I think we are, yes, I see all of the pretty red lights. We are, we are streaming on our Facebook page. Um, um, and after we're done today, we'll have, um, we'll have that recording out in, in some manner, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so that, so that we can continue to add value to our, uh, um, um, affiliated business partners, to our allied resources, to our friends, family members, to our clients who are also small business owners, we can help pour into their business. You know, it's the most interesting thing, um, but you probably won't find a group of plumbers who are sitting around on a Zoom right now talking about increasing the quality of their life by managing their, their business differently right? It's just not a thing that happens in other industries. And sometimes we get so surrounded with, um, you know, with this really incredible business building material that we forget others. Others are out there on an island on their own. They're not as connected as we are. So definitely, um, I love it if if you've got a, a friend or a, um, a, a allied partner here with you today. And if not, this will definitely be something that you can share with them after the fact to help um, to help you guys inside of that relationship. So you can be bringing value to the people who bring value to you. And that was what was so exciting about having conversation with George. Um, you know, what was it about six weeks ago or so when we put this together and we were looking for opportunities to pour back into our people was to give you then the opportunity to pour into your people. Right. Um, so with all of that said, uh, my name is Anna Kibble. I'm the team leader here at our Keller Williams office in Lone Tree, Colorado. Some of you are guests. Some of you are from our other market centers. Um, um, so feel free to reach out to me, the team here, if you have any questions. Um, and um, without further ado, George, I don't want to take any more of your time. It's all you, my friend. Awesome. Well, let me go ahead and jump in to screen share. And let's go ahead and do that. All right, cool. Do, 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 do. Here we go. And we should be live in operation. You guys see my screen with a cool logo and all that? All right, we got a thumbs up. I like it. Cool. So I'm excited to be here, guys. Here, let me go ahead and move. I'm working with two screens, so just bear with me for a quick second. All right, now we are cooking. So I know you guys on this call have been through a lot of trainings. And one thing that I like to do when I do trainings is create a conversation around it, right? Um, I feel that when a training is really more lecture-based, it's not exactly the most impactful, right? Because it's really cool to just sit here and listen, but information without implementation is simply just entertainment. So what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is less stress and more success through time blocking. I don't know, some of you guys on this call are like, oh, time blocking. Yeah, right. And I know it's a topic that we talk about a lot within the real estate realm, but outside of real estate, time blocking is really not a prevalent conversation piece, just not. Uh, unless somebody is really hyper-focused on personal development, it's just not a common topic. So before we jump in, uh, as we go through the, the today's conversation, if something stands out like as a pretty cool nugget you want to share with the world, we love getting tagged on social media. Spread the word, right? So there's, our hashtags are down there. Uh, feel free to share something that stands out. And we always love feedback. We're going to get to that part a little later. Uh, a little bit about MAPS business coaching. So I know most of the people on this call are familiar with Gary Keller. He is one of the founders of Keller Williams. Uh, but he and Abe Shreve, um, they are actually, well, Gary started MAPS uh, on the KW side where it became the largest training organization in the world of its kind by training real estate agents. And we realized that it worked at such a high level for real estate that why wouldn't we take this out to the rest of the world? There's so many other industries apart from just that one. 
So today's conversation is not going to be really specifically on real estate. It's going to be specifically on business. So I'm going to encourage all of you to take your real estate hats off, take your business hats off, and just look at it as a business owner, right? Just look at it as how you can control your life. Some of our partners is uh, KW Maps, obviously our sister company. And the one thing, not only is it a book, and it's actually, if there's any one takeaway from today's call is read that book if you haven't already. Uh, it is probably one of the better uh, guideposts that will help you to success. Um, but it will really help you identify what you need to focus on and bold, building a life of design. So real quick, in less than two minutes, I'm going to tell you guys who I am and kind of add you a little context. I am George Kuznetsov, crazy last name. I'm from Russia. Came here when I was seven. Now I'm 38, so I've been here for a while. I've been in real estate for uh, right about six years. I started on the commercial side, went into residential about a year and a half, and I, within a year and a half of being residential, I became the director of sales on an $80 million team. So I understand what it's like to operate at multiple levels of real estate and multiple levels of business. Um, a serial entrepreneur, I have ran over and started, ran and started over five companies, sold them, got out of them. Real estate was just the next cool thing and coaching, and it's just something that I love doing. I am a veteran, and uh, later I'm going to tell you how I can help other veterans. In case you know someone, I do offer a month of free coaching to them. But here's all my information. If you want to take a screenshot, totally cool. If you have any questions after the fact, please reach out. I am very happy to answer. We are going to cover some good ground today, and I just want to make sure that what we're going to do today is actually going to resonate. I want today's conversation to have a lasting impact and actually have a beneficial impact on your business. So. Today's goal is to really add a new perspective to time management. And the reason I said earlier, you know, some of you guys are like, oh, time blocking. I know we talk about it a lot. And I think that in some cases we talk about it so much that it falls under the law of familiarity. We know what we need to do, but sometimes we don't understand why we don't really do certain things. And then the more we talk about it, the more we become numb to it. And the more we're like, okay, I get it. I get it. Well, today, like I said, just keep an open mind because we're going to add a little bit of a different perspective. Um, also, when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. We're going to understand what the cost of your decisions in your daily life. So I'm going to encourage everyone to really have an honest conversation with yourself. Again, I do want people to interact. I can't see the chat. So what I want people to do is if you have something to say you want to add, I encourage that. Hop off the mute. Be brave. Just jump in there because I guarantee if you're going to say something, there's probably five other people on this call that are thinking the same thing. I'm also going to identify what is sabotaging you. What are those little creative distractions that you allow yourself to get away with that isn't help, that's actually blocking you from achieving where you want to be? And today we're going to commit to a, something pretty cool. It's very small, it's minimal, but it's going to have substantial results. So today, in order to be successful, uh, I encourage you to guys have, have a piece of paper, something to write down. If an idea comes up, don't try to remember. Just get it out, dump it on some paper, and just stay present. Also, if you have your calendar or a planner with you, that's going to be super helpful. Right, we're gonna follow the Pareto principle today. I know 20% uh, of you on this call are gonna have an incredible, incredible impact through this. You're gonna create some substantial change and you're gonna see an 80% result, 80% return. And also just have an open mind, right? This is a conversation. If something applies to you, cool. If not, just stay tuned. There's something coming up that's probably gonna be a, a different twist or something that may stand out. So I just kinda of wanna know where we are right now. Um, so. And I know some of you guys are, uh, you don't have your cameras on, you might be driving. So how are you currently doing with your time blocking? One, if you're just hearing about time blocking for the very first time, and this is a brand new concept to you. Two, you know, it's important. You're not very good at it, but you want to improve. Uh, number three, you're actually doing something. You're doing, you're getting some action on it and you really just want to nail it down. And number four, you're just rocking the house with it. And you're just looking for that, that next level. Like you're just looking for that mastery. So I'm going to pick on a couple people. And uh, Tamara, I see you just because you're on my screen. If you're on a scale of one to four, what would you say you are? Um, I would say I'm a two. Okay. So you know it's important and you need help. Awesome. So Tamara, I'll tell you what, how about you pick somebody else to jump in and say where they are? Let's make this interactive. Um, let's see. How about... I don't see a lot of faces on my screen. <laughs> I see a lot of blank screens. So how about, since she has a great name? 
<laughs> Did you say Tammy? You cut out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have we do have great names. I'm a number three. Okay. I'll say I'm doing good and I want to get better. That's awesome. Now, is anybody here a one? You've never heard of time blocking before and you're just brand new to this whole conversation. Awesome. Cool. Well, I appreciate you ladies sharing. So if I have to ask you guys as a whole, and I know the first thing that comes to mind as your own answer is, are you busy or are you productive in your day? I think a lot of times we confuse efficiency for productivity. And an easier way to break that down is, are you doing busyness or are you doing business? I know a lot of times the things that we need to do are probably the most uncomfortable and they're uncomfortable because we don't really do them a lot. Right? Repetition creates mastery. So it's easy to build little fires and say, oh, I'm going to go do this one thing, right? I got to go take care of this. It's justifiable, but I got to go take away from my one thing that I really need to do. And as you look over the course of your day, and especially with COVID having such an impact on the work environment, so many of us are working from home. I just had to swing by uh, my office earlier today, and it was like a, it's like a ghost town. Everyone, I know for a fact everybody's working from home. And it's so much easier to get distracted, right? Sometimes you're like, well, you know what? I'm doing this one thing. Let me pop a load of laundry. Let me do this. And especially with homeschooling, if you have kids. I get it. But it's really important to just be aware if you're being busy or you're being productive because one's going to make you money, the other one's going to make you feel good. Right? And it was probably a year and a half ago, maybe not, maybe more, where I had to do a time audit on myself because I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with um, TikTok, that little app, where it's video after video after video after video and it's addicting. Right? And you watch one and you all of a sudden this other one pops up and you're like, that's cool too. That's cool too. It's like these little dopamine hits, right? The next thing you know, it's probably like 20, 30 minutes that went by. And I know this slide, some of you can't see it, so I'm going to explain to you what's on it. There's a lot of words, but it's very simple. I decided to see how much time gets wasted every day and what that looks like over the course of a year. So I took the normal person's perspective, right? You work five days a week, and I'm sure everyone in this call probably works more, especially the weekends. And you work uh, 50 weeks a year because you take two weeks off vacations, whatever. If you don't, you should probably schedule vacations. We're going to talk about that. So that's 250 days worked. And I thought, okay, well, if I waste five minutes a day, not even all in a row, one minute here, one minute there, not doing what I should be doing in the time I allotted for, what does that look like? It's 1,250 minutes, right? That's 20.83 hours. Now let's get real. We all waste more than five minutes. It's just who we are. We're, it's easy to get distracted, right? Especially with the change of an environment that we're all in. So I found it to be pretty realistic that over the course of your workday, you probably waste, again, not in a row, probably 20 minutes. That 20 minutes adds up to 3.47 days over the course of your year. Oh my gosh, right? So when I look at that, I think, okay, for the, everyone, including myself that has said before, man, if I just had one more day, I would be exactly where I need to be. All right, but understand that all we're doing is like the slow little drip, this little hemorrhage of time is what's costing you what you really want. Because if I give you three and a half days now and everything else is where it's supposed to be, you probably go take a vacation, you do whatever you want. Especially the fact that everyone on this call, for the most part, is a 1099. You work for yourself. You don't have to be in the office. You don't have to work. You actually control your own time. That's why you're in the industry that you're in. That's why everyone's an entrepreneur. You're looking for that freedom, right? But if you're going to have that freedom, set time for the freedom aside. But if you're going to work, work. If you're going to work, maximize everything you can out of that little nugget of time. But if you're going to be hanging out with family and friends, be present, right? And time management really revolves around being present. So if I was to look at your calendar right now, um, what would I see, right? Calendars are always going to reflect your priorities. And if you don't, if, you, if any part of this, you guys disagree, hop off of me. I would love to hear your feedback. I, I promise. The priorities are going to be those things that are important to you, right? Well, then if I look at your priorities, are your priorities keeping you busy or are they keeping you in business? Again, are we being efficient or are we being effective? Are we staying busy doing things or are we getting things done that we know we need to do? You know, calendars also reflect your standards because I know in a lot of my calls and a lot of my clients, because um, we don't just coach the problem, we coach the person, right? There's even though I'm a business coach, there's personal goals that people still want to hit, and there's steps you can follow to achieve those. And one of those is uh, health, 
they're always health related. Well, I want to lose this much weight, right? I want to lose as much fat, whatever that looks like in your world. Maybe not, right? Maybe you want to add more time to your personal life or whatever that looks like. Maybe you want to plan for a vacation. But if that thing you want isn't being planned for, I, you, you can't expect results to come if you're actually not working towards it, right? So if health is one of your goals, then it's okay, say, say to yourself, where's my health standard? If business is one of your main goals or one of your priorities, what is your business standard? It's easy to get lost in, I'm going to work on my business. I'm going to build this and build this. But if you don't have clients coming in, what business do you have? <laughs> right? And I know right now the spring market is about to come up and it's easy to get lost because there's so much happening. And we all want to be very responsive because we're all customer service based. We're all customer centric. We want to give, right? Value is solutions. We want to solve people's, people's problems. I'd be willing to bet that at least half of the people on this call, uh, as far as the disc assessment, you're probably a high D and a high I. So you want to solve problems. You like people. You want to be out there engaging. But what is the cost of all of that, right? Whose priorities are, are reflected on your calendar? Because if you're not taking time for yourself to build your business, to build your actions onto your goals, you're giving your time away literally. And I know it kind of seems a little selfish to be like, you know what, do I make my client wait? They're really, really needy. You know, and there's, a, there's conversations you can have on the front end to establish some uh, better expectations. But those expectations are clearly defined and easier to have when they're already in place, when you already have your priorities set. And also, uh, I want to hear from somebody. If you wait to schedule your priorities at the start of the day, what's going to happen? Somebody, don't make me choose, guys. I'll get on there. Come on. Yeah, the whole day is gone. They don't get scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. Say it one more time. <laughs> I said they don't get scheduled. That's right. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Um, usually when I work with my clients, I say, you know what? And we're going to talk about what things you want to get on the calendar, what are some of the big rocks and how to really start that. But if you wait till the start of the day, you already know. Every, as soon as you wake up, and if you look at your phone, the very first thing you do, you're already in reactive mode. You're not response mode. You're just reacting. Right? So now it's like, oh, man, all these emergencies. And there's no emergencies in real estate. You know, unless you're a firefighter, you're not putting out fires. Right? It's, it's preparation is what's going to prevent that. So if you can plan these big rocks ahead of time, you're going to respond. You're not going to react because you already know what's coming. So I'm going to ask you guys to write something down. I'm going to give you guys two minutes. What are you not doing right now that you know you should? We're going to take two minutes. I don't want you guys to think about it and just be honest. I'm going to ask somebody to share. If you don't want to share, you don't have to. If nobody shares, I'm okay with it. I'm not going to be hurt. But I want it to be real. Don't just write down to me. It's like, oh, I should be doing this. Like, no, what do you truly know? You're like, man, I've been putting this aside. And this is like the day where I just need to stop like procrastinating. I just need to get into the action. Speaking of, I'm going to make notes. I should have brought music. <laughs> and if you're not sure, what if you're like, well, I don't know what I'm not doing. If I was to look into your business, what would you not want me to see? All right, let's have one brave soul come out and share. Who wants to be it? I'll tell you guys what, you know, I'll even start. I had a moment of clarity this morning where yesterday was one of those days where things kind of were moving really, really fast. I had today to get ready for. I had several other meetings to attend to. And this morning, I got up super early, did my morning routine, got in my car. It was haircut day. I was excited. And I drove a half hour to my barber, right? He's my favorite barber. And actually, I listened to audiobooks on the way there. So I call it net time. I'm all excited. And I get there. And you know what I realized? My haircut's tomorrow. Yeah. Right? No one's perfect. <laughs> I get there. And I pull in the door. And I'm like, why is this place closed? And I'm like, no, 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 it's today. And then I, had, I just like, I was afraid to do it, but I'm like, oh, I looked at my calendar. And I'm like, well, 
yeah, here we are, right? So one thing that I didn't do was actually put it in my calendar, right? Everything else is so much in alignment, but just that one detail. But it, it was just really interesting to see how one detail could throw everything off because that thing cost me an hour, right? Did I make up for it? Yeah, I mean, I read books, but I could have done other things. I had other priorities that were superseding to that. So keep in mind, give yourself a little bit of grace, right? Grace is important. So if we're not time blocking, it's very easy to get distracted because there's so many different things going on, right? And I call it landing two planes. Um, when I was in military school as a kid, the commandant was an air traffic controller and he used to tell us all these stories like, oh, you have to do this, that, and the other. And I was imagining like, what's it like to land two planes? You have so much going on, right? And a lot of us are great multitaskers, even though multitasking really, it's, it's kind of a myth. It doesn't really work. Um, but when you say yes to something, there is a cost to it. There's, you're saying no to something else. When I said yes to leaving early this morning without checking my calendar, I said no to an hour of productivity doing things that could have probably had a way better result than sitting in my car for an hour. So when you look at what you're doing, say, when I'm saying yes, what am I saying no to? Also, what are the consequences? Okay, so if I say no to this other thing, because I want to do this right here, what are the consequences? Are there any? There doesn't always have to be. Are there benefits? Also, what keeps you from saying no? Because the, the real reason of time blocking, it's not to say yes to something, it's to say no to everything else. Because the more we can focus on this one thing, we can say, okay, that's the distraction, that's the distraction, that's the distraction. That's 80% I got to focus on the 20. That's 80% I got to focus on the 20. And if your time was already blocked, how, how would that make a difference? Like, what would, you, what would your day look like? And just write down what you're thinking right now. What would my day look like if everything was, if my morning was already scheduled and the afternoon was already the best it could be? Because if you can control your morning, your afternoon is going to control itself. And I know we've all had those days where you wake up and the day kind of tends to grow legs. But if we can kind of harness that morning part, the afternoon kind of gets a little easier, right? And not every day is going to be like that. There's always going to be exceptions. And I'm not going to say there's not. And just really being conscious of it. So when we look at the day, what is typical and what, what is productive? <laughs> so we know what we need to do. And sometimes we don't always do those things, right? But if we take that one thing that we know we need to do, Right now, it's probably that little corner, that little pizza slice on the left. Now, what ideally it would potentially, we would want to have it look like, is like that half a pizza on the right. Now, I know some of you are thinking, man, that's a, that's a far leap, George. You expect me to go from the left to the right today? No, no. What I expect you to do is be aware of what you're doing. Take control of it, take a little bit of responsibility, and start working towards that part. Some of the most productive people that I know, and I've spoken to them, and I'm like, hey, like, what makes you so good at what you do? And they're like, it's just consistent effort. Nobody just wakes up super productive. I don't know anyone like that. You might. I don't. I haven't met him yet. <laughs> but I, the people that I know that are the top earners in most industries that I work in, it's just constant, constant, constant awareness. They know where their time goes, and they hold their time accountable. And their time is not, is not getting them a return. They don't waste it. And that's how they just define a waste of time. Is your time giving you a return? And it doesn't always have to be a business return. It could be family time. But understand what your priorities are. Now, I know some of us here, and especially myself, when I first started in business, we all operate off of a to-do list. You have a big list of the things you need to do, right? Um, and just like a lot of different clients that we work with, unfortunately, sometimes, some of us, we give the same amount of time, energy, and effort to every client as well as every task. But if I was to take a look at your to-do list and rate things on a one to five scale, what would that look like? And if you're not sure where to start, here, we're going to go to this slide, but there's a much easier process than this also. So if you had a list of 25 things that you do every day and you focus on the 20% of that, you'd have five things. Those would be the five main priorities. But if we take that Pareto principle even further and we identify the 20% of that, that's where that one thing comes from. That's what the book is based on that we talked about earlier, right? Some of you are very familiar with this and you're like, I get it, George. 
But if you're not sure where to start, here is a very, very easy exercise. Take a piece of paper every morning, write down 10 things that you know you need to do and pick out the two most important. Those are the ones that you need to focus on. Right? Because I know 25 to 5 to 1, that's something I would encourage you guys to do uh, as a homework assignment if you feel like getting into this further. Depends on where you are. If you want to actually maximize this and really narrow it down and have the hyper focus. But if you need a starting point, write down a list of 10 things you know you need to do today. Cool. And what are the two most important ones? The two that you know you need to do. Focus on those. That's going to get the ball rolling because if you can eat that frog early on, you can move on and you're going to get way better results. So, who knows the difference between knowing your one thing and doing the one thing? Who wants to chime in? The action of doing it. Yeah, but well, what creates that action? Well, intention, I guess. I mean, like picking it up and doing it. No, you're absolutely right. But what, what do we need for us to get us out of that comfort zone and actually do the thing we don't really want to do? And Tammy, you're on the right track. Discipline. Yep, yep. So if knowing what you're supposed to do is logic, what is doing, what, what is that going to have attachment to? Emotion. Yes, nailed it. Angela, Rockstar, I love it. Emotion. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a book by the Heath Brothers called Switch, where it talks about how humans come across how they how people decide how they make decisions right what are those mechanisms in your mind because we know what we need to do but what we do are completely different things right logic and emotion and as human beings we would you guys say we're logically driven or emotionally driven emotionally driven emotion yeah 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 if we were logically driven you know people wouldn't run into burning buildings but the way the Heath brothers, after years and years and years of studies, the way they broke it down was, if you see a little man riding an elephant, that little man is logic and the elephant is emotion. So the reason we don't do the things that we know we need to do is because there's no emotional attachment, right? There's, there's, there's no drive, you know? And that was one of the words, drive, right? We're missing inspiration. Because I can motivate you all day. I can get you all hyped up, get you out there, be like, yeah, let's go kick it, you know? kick butt let's go do these things motivation is pushing inspiration pulls you right the only way that we can attach emotion to what you need to do is by creating leverage against yourself because if you're allowing yourself to get off the hook it's because you're not, you don't care about it if you did you would do it right so pick one thing that you know you're not doing that you know you need to do and we're going to work through this exercise together. If nothing changes, where are you going to be in a year? And be honest, like literally, if nothing changes, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over, hoping something changes, using hope as a strategy, which really isn't a strategy, where are you going to be in a year? And just write that down. And just be real with yourself. If you're doing exactly what you're doing right now, and you're avoiding that thing, like, what's it going to look like? Just, you know. Also, who does this, who's this going to hurt? And is it fair and why would it be? Take a few minutes to, write, to answer those questions. So, you have your camera on and you can't see, you know, if nothing changes in your business or in your goals, in your life, but you want to change, where are you going to be in one year? In one year, if nothing changes, who is this going to hurt? Is it going to be family? Is it going to be partners? Is it going to be your kids? Is it going to be your ego? And is what you're doing by not doing your thing, is it fair? And why and why not? Anybody want to share their answers? I know it's a little bit of a touchy subject that I completely understand. So I will. Okay. All right. 
Was someone else going to do it? Because they can. No. Oh, I heard someone else speaking up. All right. So mine is bad. Like, I'm going to be homeless. I, like, legit. Um, yep. Probably starving. And um, it will hurt me. It will hurt my daughter. It will hurt the people, my family, my friends. Um, it will impact everyone, all of us. Wow. Is it fair? Um, I want to say yeah, because it's up to me. So if I don't do it, then it is fair. Okay. Would it be fair to them if you don't do the thing you know you need to do? No, it's not fair to them. Okay. You know, guys, give a round of applause. That is, my gosh, that is, wow. Thank you for sharing that. By show of hands, who got something out of that? Who, who was able to relate to some of that? Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is deep. And you know what? Um, what's most personal is most universal, right? These are all loaded questions, and I get that. But if you can answer them to yourself, honestly, if nothing changes, be, just be real with yourself. Is where, I, if, is where I'm going in a year, is this where I want to really be, right? And I'm just gonna use an example. Like if you're gonna be homeless, like you have to do the actions now, right? And even if you're not good at them, you gotta get something. We're gonna talk about how to build that momentum. But remember, who, like what's on the line? What is the cost? Who is this gonna really hurt? Most of us are in business because yeah, we hear that. We work for profit, right? We're here to fund our lives, but what do we look for? What do we look to fund? Let's keep that in mind, right? So let's look at the other side of that. What would it look like if you were 10 times better at that one thing? So using that same thing we just talked about, I want everyone to just write down, what would it look like if you were literally 10 times better? Instead of being on chapter one, you're on chapter 10 now. What would be different and how would you feel? And Angela, if you don't mind, I would love to hear your answers once you're done with this, because I want to see what, that, what the comparison looks like. Let's take a couple minutes and just focus on that. So if you can't see what's on the screen, I'll read it one more time. So that one thing that we talked about that you keep putting off, that you know you need to do. If you were 10 times better at it, what would it look like? What would be different and how would you feel? All right, let's get back into it. Who wants to share? Angela, do you want to give us the other side of that coin? No, yeah. I'm thinking on it right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm totally cool with that. I appreciate that. You know, you're awesome. Um, and I know it's, I'm asking a lot here. It's brave of you, so thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so 10 times better. I mm -hmm. am, I started with emotion. I'm proud of myself. Uh, my daughter is proud of me. I am buying a house and investment properties. Um, and, you know, like the house and the investment properties and, and that type of stuff are great. And for me, it's not about any of that. It's about making my daughter proud. Yeah. Wow. Wow, guys, give her another round of applause. Oh my gosh, that is deep. I mean, that kind of, man, that kind of got me a little choked up. I'm not even lying. <laughs> my show of hands, who, who related to that? Yeah, right? Having your kids be proud of you, that, that's a big thing. Mm. You know, but as we're going forward and we look at these things that we don't want to do, these are the things that we need to remember. These are the things we need to focus on. Who does it impact? All right. So time block your priority. 
So now that we're talking about these things, we understand what the weight of doing these actions is. We need to remember that when we schedule these things, it's the same as scheduling as an appointment with anybody else. Don't ever put yourself on a lower pedestal than someone else. You are the only one that can create your success. You're the only one that can manage your time. You are in control. I can't control your time for you. I can't. You are the hub of your decisions. You are the one that makes your choices. So what you decide to do with your time is completely up to you. But if you're not good at it, start leveraging yourself. And when something goes on your calendar, it stays on your calendar unless it gets replaced. If you have to change something, let's say, for example, prospecting, and all of a sudden someone says, I want to list my $3 million home. Am I going to prospect instead of going there? No. I'm going to go there. I'm going to lose that house. I'm going to, I'm going to be intelligent about it. But if I erase, I'm going to replace. I'm not going to give up that thing because I know it's going to take a lot of cumulative effort to get to where I need to be. But without consistency, I'm not going to get anywhere. When I was in the military, I actually did three combat tours as an infantry team leader to Iraq. And I'll tell you one thing. Repetition is the mother of mastery. The more you do something, the better you're going to be. The more you say a certain script, the more you talk to people, the better at, at something you're going to be. We used to run specific drills, and I, I'm not even exaggerating, thousands of times over. Thousands. Imagine doing something thousands of times over. After a while, you're just like, okay, I'm pulling my hair out. This is, we get it. We know it. We know it. But what we learned was when we went overseas and it actually mattered what we did and lives were online, it wasn't, this, it wasn't, we, had to, we didn't have to think about it. It was muscle memory. Things were just firing off. Like, you know what we need to do. You know your job. Go here. You do here. You do here. And it was just this time to, to slow down and everything became so fluid. Now we talk about mastery taking 10,000 hours. What they do is they actually accelerate mastery. They're like, you're going to focus on this and it's just going to keep going and going and going. So when we do talk about time blocking, there's going to be the big rocks and there's going to be the little rocks. The little rocks is going to be all the white space and all the things that we need to do. That's 80%. Number one, time block your time off. And I encourage doing that the further out you can. Why? Because it's easier to prepare for a vacation three months away than three weeks away. Right, because now you can get somebody to help you out. You can get a little bit of leverage if you're on a team. Or if you're flying solo, you can just say, hey, clients, I'm taking off. I'll be limited availability, right? But you can prepare for those things. Time blocking your one thing. That thing you know you need to do, you can put it on the calendar. And you're probably thinking, okay, George, I remember that little pizza slice. I'm here, but I want to be here. What would that look like? Okay, just daily consistent action. That's it. If you're not good at something and you really don't want to do it, okay, little by little, we want to get into it. So start with like 15, 20 minutes. I'm not saying you got to give something an hour. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to guide you into that strategy. Be like, hey, start somewhere, okay? Start somewhere. If, if it takes 10 minutes of concentrated effort, give it the 10 minutes and get out of it. But guess what? That 10 minutes is going to build, right? And if you spend 10 minutes a day... Over the course of six days, that's an hour that you didn't give that thing before at 10 minutes a day. What's 10 minutes, right? That's like Facebook. <laughs> now, one thing to consider is to be conscious of when you are going to be time blocking, what your environment is going to look like. You know, we call it building a bunker. Okay, what are you actually, when you're going to do this activity, where are you going to do it? And I don't mean just in business, right? Usually this applies to uh, prospecting. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking that. But what if your one thing is to spend more time with family because all you do is work? What if your family business life is all out of balance and just you kind of feel like it's whack? That's fine, right? But build a bonker. If you're going to be with family, turn your phone off. Build a bonker. Surround yourself. Like build that wall. Build that wall against distraction. You know, if you need to store some provisions, if you guys are going to be watching a movie, cool. Don't let anything distract you from that. Bring water, snacks, do whatever. If, you, if the prospecting is your thing, sweep for mines. You know, um, so when I say sweep for mines, anticipate distractions, right? Like TikTok, I was saying, like my phone is over here and I don't have to put it face down and almost at arm's reach because if I don't, it's easy for me to pick it up and look at it and be like, oh, cool. What's, what's like? So many emails that just come in. But that right there is going to take away from my presence here. And enlist support. 
if you're going to do something, like, tell people, hey, look, guys, look, for this one hour, I'm going to be doing this one thing. Just don't mess with me. Okay, cool. Everything else I can do. So let me ask you, I want to hear some, uh, some feedback. When you're, when you're doing your thing that you're supposed to be doing and you're getting yourself out of it, what is your favorite creative distraction? What do you, what do you allow yourself to get off the hook with? <laughs> so George, Listen, I feel, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if I can go back to the, to the slide before, I just wanted to make a comment about that. Oh. You know, turning, turning off or sweeping for mind. I had a conversation with Anna one day and she said, you just need to turn off your notifications and so that your email doesn't distract you and because it's mm. so easy to do. And I was like, okay. And I, I really, I pondered that for a few days and then I did it. And this was October of last year. And I have yet to turn on my email notifications on my phone again. I turned on my, turned off my notifications for Facebook. The only notification I get are text messages. Beyond that, nothing else. I don't turn them back on during vacation, nothing. Mm. Let me and ask you, how, how has that negatively affected your life? It hasn't. Oh. That's just it. <laughs> it hasn't. It hasn't. And, and so really I'm sharing that because I think we're all afraid of missing things, right? And, and not getting back to or not responding fast enough to whatever needs people have from us. Um, and so it, it took me probably a good month to like really adjust to that. Um, what am I missing out? What am I, what am I not doing? Mm -hmm. And, and shifting that to um, my priorities are first and then I will take care of all of yours. I love it. I love oh, it. Thank yeah. you for that. That's, that's, a, no, that's awesome. <laughs> it was scary though. <laughs> it is. And I'm not here. I'm, and I'm not going to say it's not scary. Right. Cause you're like, what if something big happens? What if, what if I miss on this deal? You know what? You're, you're going to be okay. Yep. But let's talk about some other creative distractions, you know, email notifications. Clinton, what's one of your favorite ones? I'm only picking on you cause you're on my screen. <laughs> that's fine. No, it's, it's Facebook. You know, I find Ooh. myself doing something on Facebook. And that and and uh, gosh, it's it's got to be the email. So yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. Um, how many on here, by show of hands, are on Facebook for business purposes? The next thing you know, you're an hour into it and no business got done. Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Everybody, if I don't see your hand, well, trust me. I yep. <laughs> Angela's like thumbs up. I love it. Uh, let's hear from one more first. So what's another favorite creative distraction? Trust me, if you're thinking it, we all are. Let's hear from one more person. If I'm really avoiding something, I'll even do the dishes before I do it. <laughs> and it's like my least favorite chore. <laughs> that is awesome. But what's funny is dishes present less pain to you. Right? When we avoid something, we're just avoiding pain. If you're not looking to change, it's because the pain's not great enough. And this comes from straight from Gary Keller. The pain's not there, George. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so if we looked at your calendar next week after today's conversation, what would it look like? All right. What, what, what would be some of the, the shifts, right? I want, you to write, I want you to write down three things of how are, are going to be three points of differentiation from your calendar now to your calendar next week, right? That, that's going to be a little commitment level. That's it. Three things. You can do anything three times. But if I was to look at your calendar in one week, would I see that your standards have risen or have they decreased? Have they increased? Are your standards higher in what you really want to focus on or are they the same? Because if they're the same, they're really not the same. They're deteriorating. I'm going to show you why here in a minute, right? Now, I was talking about this pretty much the whole conversation. If you want to start small and build on success, then I'm going to elaborate that on the next slide. But if I was to ask you, how do you eat an elephant? Who knows the answer to that trick question? One bite at a time. That's right, Angela. One bite at a time. So I don't know if you guys have ever read the book, Atomic Habits. If you haven't, add it to your list for this year. But what they did was they did a study where they, they asked, 
what would 1% improvement look like over the course of a year? 1%. And this is when I work with my clients. This is what we focus on. We focus on 1%. You got to start somewhere. Some of us want to bite off this giant piece of chocolate and be like, we're going to eat this whole thing at one time. No, no. Because what's going to happen is it's going to be too painful. You're going to get away from it. Start with what you can truly handle, right? Make it manageable. But focus on 1% improvement every day in whatever areas you want to grow. Because over the course of a year, you're going to be 37 times better. 37 times. But if you don't do anything, that's well, you can see on the screen. You're going to be 37 times. Well, you're going to be on that <laughs> 0.99 times 365. That's a 0.03 decline. That's basically like staying. Because if you're not growing, you're just falling behind. You just don't realize it. So if I was to ask somebody that hasn't answered yet, what would 1% improvement on your one thing every day look like? What would that be? 1%, that's it. Let's see. There we go. Stephanie, you're on my screen too. So what, I know she's like, oh no, not me. Come on, man. <laughs> what would 1% improvement look like to you? Oh my gosh. Um... For me, my my one thing is is planning, getting all the stuff, getting it written down. And actually, I struggle with like knowing what to do to move forward with my business. So it's probably just more more meeting and more more one on ones and more networking and and getting out there to have the opportunity for more business. Awesome. No, I appreciate you answering. One thing, I, a pitfall I want to encourage you to avoid is don't plan to plan. Okay. Right? And we kind of <laughs> get out of those weeds because it's easy to get stuck in there. And you're like, well, I need to plan this. No, you know, you need to plan one thing and start executing, right? Get into that action. Okay. And what you're going to realize is once you get into it a little, 1%, it doesn't have to be anything big. Just start off with maybe one networking, one new networking conversation every day. Box okay. checked, right? Do that for two days. Then in two days, you know what? Let's bump it up to two. Let's push this a little bit. It gets easier. It gets easier, right? And then that thing doesn't become something you have to do. Something it just becomes who you are. It's just what you do. So yeah. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, if planning is one of your things. <laughs> Getting stuck in the weeds is a little too easy. Uh, let's take sure. on one more person. Uh, Tamara, what would one percent in your life of improvement look like? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Like with just, I don't know. 1% improvement, what, one action, one small step towards what you want to accomplish. What would that step look like? Or what would that action be? I think it'd be more organized. I'd be more in the moment on things and less, um, I feel like in my head, I always have all these things going on at the same time. I want mm. the moment and not have a million things in my head at once. <laughs> Or yeah, something. well, if you're, if you're trying to land two planes, how many can you land? <laughs> Sorry, say that again? If you're trying to land two planes at the same time, how many can you land? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, the one book exactly. talks about chasing two rabbits, right? The same exact analogy. Yeah. Um, and, and what you said is like literally the importance of time blocking. Just even if it's something small, 15 minutes and you want to focus on the one thing, just set 15 minutes aside and just start somewhere, right? I'm not asking you to be like, you got to give this thing three hours. There's nothing you have to do. But if you want to see some sort of improvement, just start with 15 minutes and see where it goes. And then once you actually start doing that thing, a lot of my clients realize, you know, I don't need to do that thing. Cool. Well, let's get off the calendar completely. Awesome. I appreciate you guys' input. I know I'm picking on some of you guys. You're like, oh, dude, no more, no more. So now that we had this conversation, you guys should have a little bit of a new perspective on time management. I know it's not a brand new topic to some of us, but hopefully you got some, some really cool insights, some that stood out. Recognizing the cost of your busyness, the things that don't pay you, but make you feel good because we're getting stuck in that efficiency, not productivity. Identifying what sabotages your success, those little things like Facebook alerts, right? It's, and I'm not saying you got to turn all those things off, but when you're trying to focus on something, and actually there's no try, once you're focusing on something and you realize yourself getting distracted, don't avoid it, just, to, just acknowledge it. Just be aware of what's going on. Don't say, oh, that doesn't happen. If it happens, cool. Just be conscious of it and then identify what can I do to actually get away from that? 
you know, in some cases it's turning off notifications and after a while you realize it doesn't matter. Maybe it's setting up a little space of where you can actually do the thing. And I would encourage all of you on this call to commit to 1% improvement. 1%, it is that minimal, but the things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. But there's scientific proof that over the course of a year, if you focus on 1% improvement, you'll be 37 times better at that thing. Cool, so I'm gonna open up the questions, aha, rude remarks, jokes, anything. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I've been working on this with my coach and um, uh -huh. we have literally gone to, if I keep my, my appointment with myself or with whoever, I turn it green so that we're, you know, using positive reinforcement also. And uh, it's, it's really worked. Same thing with, um, you know, calls. If you move even a paper clip from one plate to another plate or one bowl to another bowl, it, it, it's a dopamine hit and you crave that and it becomes exciting. So just something to help drive. That is my recommendation. I love it. Make it fun. All right, this is your business. You can do whatever you want with it. Make it a game. <laughs> um, for example, uh, you guys can see, you know, I, I'm very highly energetic. I have ADHD. One of the things I know for myself is uh, 20 minutes, I'm good. If I'm working on something tedious, 10 minutes, I got to get out of it. Maybe five minutes. I need breaks. Knowing that about myself, I don't ignore it. I use what's called the Pomodoro Technique. Right. For every 50 minutes of work that I do, I take a 10 minute break. I mean, I get out of my chair. I, I basically like leave my, my office area. I go hang out. It's almost summertime here. I'm probably going to take a walk later. But take those breaks because I look at those as refueling your energy. But what Angela said, like to me, that's how I do it. And I'm glad you, uh, you shared some of those insights. Anybody else want to share anything that maybe that stood out? Maybe you have a question about something? I do. Sure. Um, it's really about a 1% improvement that um, we talked about a few minutes ago, because really when you think about it in a bigger picture, we sit in the trainings and then we get a bunch of ideas that we try to implement. So somebody will be thinking about, I want to go farming, I want to go do door knocking, I want to go send mails. And before you realize you literally are all over the place. And so it's, I guess, really the question for you as a coach, if you were to put that into practice for somebody, what will be the 1% daily increase? Meaning you do this today, you do this tomorrow, you do that the next day, or you just focus say farming this week. Okay, well, tomorrow I'm gonna start 15 minutes on learning what my farming is going to be in the next three months and every, how would you put it in perspective when we say 1% improvement daily? That is a wonderful question. Thank you for asking that. And this is something that I work with clients on because it's a common question. Like what's the best thing to do? The best thing to do is gonna be the thing that you do. But there's a book out there is, along with an assessment called Strengths Finder. And Strengths Finder talks about you can be more of what you are, but you can't be what you're not, right? What I help my clients do is I help them achieve clarity on their natural strengths and preferences and I work in those areas. Because if you can identify what you enjoy doing, you're probably going to do that thing. I try to write that book, by the way. What's that? I write that book, Strength Fighters. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And what Strength Fighters is really good for is, well, number one, understanding the concept, like you can improve on what you have, but build off of what you have. So it's understanding, are you the right person in the right seat doing the right thing? When I look at your business, are you the best person for your role, right? So when we're talking about prospecting, are you going about it the right way? Because if I look at your DISC assessment, and I know in Keller Williams, uh, we have the KPA in MAPS business. We have the MPA, which is a much more in-depth personality assessment. I put all my clients through that because I know if I can get you into a zone where you thrive and you can do those activities where you actually enjoy doing them, you're going to get results because you enjoy doing those things. So I would, rec I would suggest doing those assessments. I know the leadership uh, has access here. They are they probably hope, I'm, hope, I'm sure they're going to be very helpful with that. Understand what you're naturally good at if you, if you don't already know, and then see which one of your prospecting ideas aligns with what you're actually going to be naturally inclined to do. The so five plus four and seven plus two is going to both give you nine, but there's different ways to get to the same point, right? And if you identify, like, hey, I'm actually strong at this. I talk to people on the phone better than I do in person. That's an avenue to explore. I talk to people more in person, better in person than I do on the phone. That's another avenue to explore, but don't ignore those things. 
right? And I know you want to sell in real estate. A lot of people are going to say, well, this is the best way. This is the best way. This is the best way. It's the best way for them. Find out what's good for you and then find someone who's really great at that thing and then benchmark it. Say, hey, what did you do to get really good at that thing? And I'm willing to bet nine out of 10 times that person is going to be more than happy and willing to share that information. Hopefully that answered your question, probably the longest answer form I could give. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sure. Anything else? Anyone? I, I would like to say something. Sure. Um, I guess one thing that I have found very helpful in my routine is um, I, I give myself breaks and I time myself. So mm -hmm. like, let's say I'm practicing real, I practice real estate at Monday through Saturday, one through five. And I'll write down on my list, like, okay, read for 30 minutes, follow up social media. And like, I'll time myself. So if I'm reading, I'll do like 30 minute increments of like each thing. For me and my schedule personally right now, I'm not working on any deals. Okay. Um, I'm kind of just like, I'm new to the business and I'm kind of, you know, just really just doing groundwork right now. But um, I found that super effective. So I won't get overwhelmed with everything mm. that I need to do. Cause like, I did notice in the beginning that I was getting super overwhelmed. I had all this information getting thrown at me and you do, I, at least for me, I got scared, you know and it's like, I kind of dwindled off. Um, and I, so for me to like prevent that I, I time myself, I break it down into increments and it does, it helps me at least be a little bit more effective in my work and what I'm doing. And it keeps my mind healthy. Yeah, I love that. No, I, I'm so glad you said that. Um, it's very close to that concept of the Pomodoro technique where you time yourself and you take a break, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, you know what you're doing, if that's working for you, keep going. What this does says, just schedule those things on your calendar. But if that's where you're starting, that's great. Identify what works for you and then just say, okay, you know what? I found my pattern that clicks. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into, I'm gonna put it into stone and put it on my calendar. Uh, real quick, guys, if you want to take a screenshot, here's all my information again. If you have questions, concerns, feel free to reach out. Also, if you happen to know anyone outside of real estate that could benefit from coaching, I would love to have a conversation with them. You can, you're more than welcome, and we encourage you to send referrals. Um, we do have revenue share for everyone within Keller Williams. So if you send a referral and they happen to come on as a client, you will get a monthly thank you check. So I want to be very respectful of your time. Guys, thank you so much for having me here. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully everyone got a little bit of, a little benefit out of this. Something new came of it and something you can take and move forward with. So I am going to stop my share. And uh, awesome. there we go. George, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today um, and for, for helping us have a better understanding of uh, of, of time blocking and managing our soul. And even for, you know, even for people like me, who've been, who've been doing this, who are really familiar with the one thing who, you know, when you first that question, I was a three or four, like I'm doing really well. Maybe I'm working on mastery. Like time blocking is kind of my jam. And I, I have a pitch full of notes. Like, uh, you know what? I haven't looked at it that way. And, and maybe I need to go back to and what would 1% better look like for me, right? What would one more dial look like tomorrow? What would one conversation look like? Um, so thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. This was thank incredible. You. Awesome. Thank you. I awesome, appreciate guys. it. Yeah. Hey, it was my pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. And uh, hopefully we can do this again soon. Thank you. George. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And um, the rest of the team, I look forward to seeing you back next Wednesday at 11 a.m. We've got a phenomenal um, um, office team meeting and we are launching our own Colorado Battle of the Scripts Champions. So make sure you're here next week for our first script off. Good one. Awesome, guys. We'll see you then. Have a great afternoon. Go be productive. Bye.